ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Annie, thanks for your fine work. We had a very grand time last evening. Uh, Annie already introduced Arnold Sherman, our director of the American Winning Coalition. Also with us today is our Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Mindy Papetti. Mindy, thanks for being here. You know, there is one common message that we're going to be getting across this country in every town, in every neighborhood, in every village to friend and foe alike. So listen up. Donald J. Trump will be elected by a landslide from 2020. Make no mistake about that. And another message we're getting out to friend and foe, especially foe and especially to the mainstream media, know this, that the GOP across this country and every state and every town and every village is stronger than it ever has been. Yeah. And, and ladies and gentlemen, it is strong. It is strong because of people like you. Because of grassroots America taking their time on a day like this coming out for one reason, for God and for country, and never forget that. Now we know, we know through history that this party, the Republican Party, was once called the party of Lincoln. We also know that it was once called the party of Reagan. But not one person should ever, ever forget that in our time, this is now the party of Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. We, the Republican Party, we, the GOP, whether it's a municipal party, a county party, or a state party, or the national RNC, we are the party that believes and stands on the principles that bring together God and country. Never, never have I seen in my lifetime a president not ashamed to use that word God and country in the same sentence. And that is something to be proud of. We are the party that stands for the constitutional right of free speech. And make no mistake about this, anyone, whether a young person from a Catholic church somewhere in this country or another person, they have the right to wear a red hat that says, make America great again. Because we're the party that supports the right to free speech. We are the party that stands for the right, the constitutional right to bear arms. That is a right that will never be taken from us, no matter what the media says, and no matter what the party of Lenin and Stalin say. Because, ladies and gentlemen, that is the party no longer of John F. Kennedy. That is the party of Lenin and Stalin, a Democrat social party. Whether they like to hear it or not, that is the way that many of us describe them. We are the party that will always stand for and that the President stood for at the State of the Union message, the constitutional right to life. That is an absolute imperative. What the, city, what the city of New York and the state of New York did just across the Hudson River from where I live is nothing short of evil murder. They don't like to hear the words, they don't want to hear those words, but you can only describe that as murder. When you destroy the life of a child, not only in the womb of the mother, but after birth, there is something terribly wrong. And I've got to tell you, folks, I've never used the word evil, but as was said earlier by a couple of speakers, it's evil because it exposes that spiritual war. It is a war truly against evil. And this is why, this is why you are very important. And I'll tell you something else that they don't like to hear. Another message, a profound message that they're going to hear, that we are also the party that will finish the job in making America great again in 2020. Yeah. We are going to finish that job with Donald J. Trump in the White House. They better learn quickly. The Democrat Socialists, the Independents, Republicans who are not necessarily yet on board with the President, they better learn to get on board because the Trump train is coming through every town and every city and every state and it's stopping at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in November of 2020. That is exactly what's going to happen. We are strong and we are tough and we are united as Republicans. Because when we fight, 
we fight to win. If I've learned anything, anything by working with the people who work with the President of the United States on his campaign, we fight to win. We win and we win. Surrender, quitting is no option. We fight to win. Yeah. And that's why he's in the way. We fight for every mile. We fight for every yard. And we fight for every inch of what God Almighty has blessed this nation with. And it is absolutely imperative that we never, ever give up that fight. I'm going to read something to you that the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, said when he was in office. Probably in the most difficult times of his presidency, and no doubt in the history of this nation. He said that the dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. He went on to say that the occasion is piled high with difficulty and we must rise, we must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, so we must think anew and we must act anew. And then, and then ladies and gentlemen, we shall save our country. Those were the words of President Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of the United States of America. Well, President Trump, in our time, in the time that we live in, understands that our nation is embarking upon a great struggle, a great struggle for the heart, the soul, and the spirit of the United States of America. Because the occasion is piled high with difficulty. We are in a great struggle. And it is not just a political struggle, and indeed it is a spiritual struggle for the heart, soul, and spirit of this great land. President Trump understands that we are in a struggle that is pitting socialism against capitalism, fear against faith, and good against evil. Make no mistake about that. This is a struggle that all of us, you and me, and by the way, grandma and grandpa and aunt and uncle and mom and dad, a struggle that we must engage in to ensure, to ensure that our children and our grandchildren will indeed live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now, now, when I talk about the party of Lenin and Stalin, many people ask me, how do you get up before an audience? How do you get on national television without really knowing much about socialism and the party of Lenin and Stalin? So I tell them simply this that I happen to be married to a woman that lived under a hammer and a sickle and a red flag. I am married to a person that lived in the evil empire, in the Soviet Union. And when she woke up one day and saw that nation fall, she said, I am going to the nation where the stars and the stripes fly, yes. where freedom reigns. When she heard that Donald Trump was running for President of the United States and heard come out of his mouth that we are going to fight against Obamacare, that we are going to fight against socialism, that we are going to fight against those things that are presently in our day, in our lifetime, are bringing down the country of Venezuela, she said to me a chill ran up and down her spine believing and thanking God Almighty that there is a courageous leader who will stand tough and stand strong against the birth of socialism in this country. And so my wife in Newark, New Jersey one day rose her right hand and she pledged allegiance to a flag and she was proud to say and she says today I am here legally, and that's how you come into this country, legally. So yes, so yes, I think I have pretty good basis to say they are the party of Lenin and Stalin. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wherever I go, people ask me, gee, it's nice that you came to see us. It's nice that you came from New Jersey and from wherever you've come from to join us. What can we do for you? What can we do for you, Mr. Rogers? And I thought about that question many times. And I said, you know what you can do for me? You can do for me the same thing that I would love for you to do for the President of the United States. So I'm going to ask you to do me a favor, and I'm going to ask you to do the President a favor. I'm going to ask you, when you leave this place today, or maybe tomorrow, or maybe during the weekend when you're off, 
as you're walking around in a mall or when you go home to see your children, your grandchildren, I want you to look at them. Look in their eyes. Look in that little baby in a stroller with mom and dad or grandma and grandpa. I want you to look at them and I want you to remember this. 10, 15, 20 years from now, when they grow up and they look back in history, they're going to ask you a question, Mom. They're going to ask you a question, Dad. They're going to ask you a question, Grandma, Grandpa, businessman, lawyer, whoever you are or wherever you are from, they're going to ask you this question. What did you do to save my country in your time? What did you do? What did you do to preserve the freedoms of what that wonderful, beautiful flag represents? What did you do? Because in their time, believe me, they're going to ask that question. And I hope to God Almighty, all of us, every single one of us here today, and those who you will be able to be in touch with after you leave here today, that you will be able to say, well, son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter, niece, nephew, or whoever, that I did my best by helping President Donald Trump, by helping President Donald Trump in my time lead a way to reignite a light that directed us where? To the shining city on a hill called the United States of America, where what happens where no one is ashamed to worship God Almighty and the citizens are still yet free. That, that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the answer and only answer that will elevate our children and grandchildren in their time. Because, folks, we succeed. Because we win. And when people ask, how is it that all of us who are working for the president, and that's you, and that's me, and that's others around this country from Main Street to Wall Street, how is it that we have succeeded? We have succeeded because of hard work. Hard work, putting our faith to work. But there was something else. Something else, ladies and gentlemen, that the mainstream media will never, ever, ever talk about. There is something else that we need to let our children know. It was not only hard work, but it was prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If my people, let this ring out in your heart today and let it ring out in that answer to your children and your grandchildren because, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm about to share with you rung out loud and clear at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland right before Donald Trump took that podium and accepted nomination of President of the United States. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Amen. You, you today, whether you understand or believe it or accept it or not, you today are the instrument in which God Almighty is using to bring that scripture to reality and you today are the person bringing that man that God has chosen, as was, said, as was said earlier, Donald J. Trump, to be the leader of the President of the United States of America. You today are being used by God. So yes, yes, we will be able to look at the eyes, those precious eyes of the children from this, this day and age until they are older. We'll look in their eyes and we'll say, well, you know what? We did. We did, son. We did, daughter. We did, grandson, granddaughter. We did the best we could. We did the best we could in doing what? We did the best we could in making America prosperous again. We did the best we could in making America strong again. We did the best we could in making America safe again. And you could, but, and you could believe that we succeeded in making America great again. Thank you and God bless.